One of the most popular ways to manage users in an organization is through Active Directory. And one of the most common database tools is Snowflake, but they don't talk to each other necessarily right out the gate. So in today's video, I wanna to explain to you how you can provision users in Snowflake through Active Directory. It'll help you automate the process so that you don't have to manually recreate users in Snowflake, but instead take advantage of Active Directory. That's why you have it. So let's now get started setting up Azure and Snowflake to provision users. So the first step here is to go to Azure Active Directory. Obviously, if you have this already set up, you probably have a bunch of users, maybe some groups, but in our case, I'm just going to create a test user that we're ultimately going to use to provision and send over to Snowflake. So let's go to new user, create new user. And here's where you go through the steps to fill out the identity for your user. You may have a bulk upload of people that you're putting in here, but I'll go through and add some information here and then we'll review. So here I've created a user, John Doe, and filled in all the information here, name, first name. And I'll just point out that for me, my username, because I'm just using this free account, it gives a really long Microsoft domain name here. But if you're working on this in a legitimate enterprise environment, you'd see your company domain there uh, probably a lot cleaner than this. So let's go ahead and create this. So here we can see that it successfully created the user. And now we can move on to the next step, which is adding Snowflake as an enterprise application in our Active Directory. So let's go into Active Directory here. And what we're going to do is click on Enterprise Applications. And this is where we're going to be able to add Snowflake to our Azure environment and make sure it can uh, talk to it the way we want. And what we'll do is go to New Application. And obviously there's a bunch here that you can use. That's one of the great things about uh, Active Directory is how it can connect to so many things. And let's search for Snowflake. And what we're going to do is Snowflake for AAD, Azure Active Directory. You can change the name if you want, but I'll just keep it as is, and you can see there's a couple different options of things you can do, but let's click create. Now that took just a minute and here we can see it successfully added it. And now we're met with this screen, which is the overview. And the first step that it asks you to do is to assign users and add groups. But really what this is doing is adding existing users. So if I click this here, it's gonna give me a select list of users that I have on this active directory. So I'm going to click this John Doe guy here and we have him selected and click select. You could select an entire role, but I don't have that plan level, so I can't show you that. But the steps would be pretty much the same. So go ahead and assign. Now John Doe is assigned to be provisioned. Now before we go through and set everything up here, we are going to want to set some things up in Snowflake. And essentially what we need to do here is create an integration with Snowflake. There's a lot of words here that you can follow, but I'm just gonna show you exactly what you need to do. And really the main thing you need to run is if you go down to configuration, copy and paste all of this right here. These are the commands you need to run. So go ahead and drop that into your Snowflake worksheet. The expectation here is that you do have account admin permissions. There are ways you can get around this, but it's gonna be the easiest, most straightforward way is if you're the account admin or have somebody who is run this for you. So it's gonna use that role. It's going to create a new role called AAD Provisioner, and it's going to grant some permissions to that role. And then it's also going to create a security integration for AAD provisioning. It has all these attributes already pre-filled in for you and tied to the role. And then the final select statement here is going to give you a secret access token that we're going to need to use when we set everything up in Snowflake. So we need to run all this stuff. So first let's run all of this right here and it should successfully create it. So now it's created this integration. And if you run this here, this is going to give you a code, a token that we're going to need to use again uh, here shortly. So keep this available. The other item you're gonna need is what's called a tenant URL. And what that means is it's your typical Snowflake URL, but appended with SEIM v2. So it's gonna look something like this. So if we copy this just to have it handy for us, because we're gonna need it, in my case, let's let's see what I have. It's going to be snowflakecomputing.com and I can get rid of console and all this stuff. This is going to be my tenant URL right here and what I'll need to use in the next step. So we have our secret token and we have our tenant URL and we're ready to go back into Active Directory and set up the provisioning on that end. Back in Active Directory, let's go now to provisioning and let's set this up so that Active Directory can talk 
to Snowflake through this integration that we just built and it's designed for this to work. So it should be able to work together. Going through here, we're going to select automatic. And that's helpful because in the future, as you have new users or new roles added, you can automatically have them sync with Snowflake and it just makes the whole process easier. And that's really the whole point of this. So now here we are down here with admin credentials and here it's asking for the tenant URL. And we found that in the last part. So go and copy that and paste it in. Next is the secret token. And again, that was from this other one. So copy this and drop it in there where it says secret token and now test the connection. And then here we can see it gave us the green check mark, meaning it is all good. Save and it's going to update these settings for us. Now that that's saved, we get a few more options and it opens up mappings here and you can see what's being mapped for the different groups or different users. Again, for us, we're just doing users. So let me click this and here you can see what's happening. And later on, we're going to see how we can customize this a bit. Essentially, it's linking certain information to Snowflake attributes. The main one to call out here is that the username is going to be the principal name as of right now. You can set some different settings here. For example, if there's a failure, you can get a notification, but we're not going to set any of that here. And the current status is off and we can leave that off. Now we don't need to set that up. Uh, so again, I'm just going to save this and close this out and we'll go back to enterprise AAD provisioning. So here we can see it's set up. We have this all here. And once you're ready to run this in a real production environment and you're ready to keep actively monitoring, you can click start provisioning. You can see the provisioning interval is 40 minutes. And essentially that means every 40 minutes, once you start provisioning, it's automatically going to look and run and update whatever's there. So if you have new users being added, you can pretty confidently say it would be reflective within 40 minutes, assuming you don't do it manually. So let's give this a shot here. Let's go to provision on demand. And that's going to allow us to on demand push a subset of users. And for us, we have that John Doe user that we added. This is tying to those users that we added. It's not your entire active directory. It's just who you added to that enterprise application, which we did earlier. So select your user and provision. And it's as simple as that. So here we can see it imported the user. It made sure it was all good matched it and, and synced it over. So let's go to Snowflake now and check that this user now exists in our account. So if I go to account and users, here is the user. We've now created this user in Snowflake through Active Directory. So let's now see how we can customize some of these fields to uh, adjust it based on how we want. A lot of times when we create users, we're going to want to set a default role or a default warehouse, something like that. And there is a way to do that through this process, but it's a little tricky if you're not familiar with it. So let me show you how to do it. Here's a link that's from the Snowflake community and it walks you through this process. I'll leave a link to this. And the most important part that we need to do here is actually go to a specific link, which is force schema editor enabled true. It's definitely not intuitive. If you're not used to it. You kind of have to find this, but this will allow you to have more options down here to edit the mappings for you. If you're just going through this without going to that link, this is, let me show you what it will look like. If you click advanced options, you won't see the option to edit anything else. You can add a new mapping here, but this isn't where we want to do this, but let's go through this link, click this guy and I'll sign in through the portal. Now we're back, but we're here with the force schema editor enabled, and this is going to open up some new options for us. So back in here, we'll go to enterprise applications, snowflake, provisioning, go through the same steps and again, edit the mappings. But this time when we go in here and we say show advanced options here, now we have a different view. We have the ability to edit these lists and you can do a lot with this, but in our case, we just want to see how to do a default. Let's just say role. In my case, I have a role called developer. So let's make sure John Doe is given a default role of developer in here. Again, it gives you uh, different options for role, maybe a warehouse, secondary roles, if we want to change the username. So in our case, remember the username was really long and we're going to add that as the name. So let's do the default role, copy this and add this here. It's going to be a string. If you want to make it required, you can put this here as well. I'm also going to put one for the username because remember our username is really long and, and I want to change that for uh, our guy here. So let's keep this save and it does recommend you download the schema just in case, you know, cause we are overriding some things here, but for a demo, I'm going to say yes and not worry about that. So now what I want to do is add a new mapping for those new attributes that we added. So 
So I go to add new mapping, just direct. The source attribute is what we're pulling from Active Directory. So what value from the user you created do you wanna use here? Now, before we go too far, let me show you what I'm looking at here. Here are all the different properties here that we have. And when I created this user, I set the job title property to developer, which should match the roles that I have. I have a developer role. So I want that to be used. I kind of want to bring that attribute over and assign that to the default role, set that value. And again, it's the job title uh, attribute. So, so job title, default value, if null, you can set that here. We don't need to do that, but you could. And the target attribute now, because we just edited the schema, we have these new options here. So I'll set default role. And that's what the whole point of adding those and kind of overriding that schema to give us these options here. It's not going to be used as the identifier to match objects. So we can leave that no, and we'll just leave these as is. So select okay, and we'll do this again, but this time we'll do it for um, the username. I wanna change the username and I'll change it to display name. So the source will be display name, target, username, okay save and this is saying by saving all of our users and groups will be resynchronized and what that should mean is our user will be updated here with the new information right so this is probably just teeing up for the next run so to push over this change what i'll do is go to uh, provision on demand again and we'll find this user and push that change over now that we have the new mapping it should just update it and i just selected user provision It did have an error, but let's retry. Sometimes if you do it again, it, it will work. We didn't get a response here. So let's one more time. Now the issue here could be because of it's a lowercase and the actual role itself is all uppercase. Let me try to go back and change this and see what happens. So let's change this to all caps, save and run it again. So if they're poking around a little bit, the issue may be because of the display name that there's a space uh, in it. So let's try to change what is used as that default value. So what I'm gonna do is use an email instead. So I'm gonna add a new email here. I'll call this test at mydomain.com and save. So this is what we would expect to be the username instead of the really long one that's the principal name, which is right here. Now back to the provision, we're gonna change that mapping to instead use the email, instead of using display name, we're gonna use mail, save, and let's try this again. Provision on demand, John Doe, provision. So now that didn't work, but I'm thinking we could try now, let's try this mail nickname. I wonder if this is getting messed up and I'm just gonna walk you through my process of troubleshooting this. So let's go back again and change these mappings. Users, and this time, let's see if we can find Mail nickname. Okay. It's a little bit of a cleaner name here. Let's go back and provision on demand. Once again, fingers crossed. Still failure. Now what I'm going to try here, I'm going to delete this user and let's see if we can trigger it. It should have updated it, but I'm going to try to start fresh here and see if we can get this pushed over. Let's retry. Still nothing. Hopefully this has been entertaining to watch. All right. So now looking back at this, I think the problem I'm running into is I'm trying to update the username twice and this is already set here, but I'm trying to update it again here. So I'm going to delete this mapping and ch instead change this to what I want. So in our case, we'll say mail nickname. Let's try that save. I think it's because I'm doing two of the same object that is getting messed up. That's my current working theory. All right, back to provisioning. Feel good about this one provision. And there it is, success. So hopefully you found that interesting just watching me do that. You know, sometimes it doesn't go as smoothly as you hope, but I think that's a good way to learn about how to troubleshoot some of these things and see how this all plays. But if we look here now, again, let's look at our username. It's now John Doe, it's based on the male nickname and the default role should be developer, which is pulling from the job title. So let's go back into our users here and refresh. And here we can see John Doe, default role developer. So that worked as we wanted. The username is John Doe, it's no longer that long name. And of course you can go through now and add all these different types of default values. Hopefully a lot smoother now because you've seen it done and you know what to look out for. But now we've been able to provision and sync our users directly from Active Directory to Snowflake. And you just, at this point, just go in, add more users, add more groups and sync and over however you need. 
Hopefully now you have a clear understanding of how to provision users in Snowflake through Azure Active Directory. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.